briefly. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Zakin Nai. Uh, my name has to be kept secret for a few reasons, and I hope my face is not recorded. I am a student, and to Dr. Zakin Nai, first of all, I am sorry because you are the person I hated the most a few years back. Before I became a Muslim, I really don't like you, I really hate you, and when any of my friends try to praise you, I will make sure I done great you. So my question to you today is, despite of all this kind of hatred of others towards you, how do you continue doing this da'wah to the entire nation, people and everyone? And one more thing, Dr. Zake, uh, I would like to sincerely say I'm sorry for all the hatred in the past. Sister asked a very good question. She said that previously in the past she used to hate me and she used to speak against me and anyone who praised me she used to attack them and attack me. And I believe that now she is a Muslim and she's apologizing for that. Sister, first I'd like to say that Thank you for giving me all those hatred because when a person truly hates someone and he believes in it, but if he's logical, inshallah, there are chances they will come to the true part. And I'll give you a very good example. The best example I can give you is Hazrat Umar Radilawan. He was the second caliph of Islam. He was one of the staunchest enemy of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Islam. So much so that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did dua to Allah that give hidayah to one of the Umarain out of the two Umar give hidayah to one and Allah give hidayah to Umar bin Khattab and when the person used to hate Islam ready to kill in the name of Islam when he accepted Islam he was one of the staunchest supporters of Islam so I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he make you like Hazrat Umar that one who was the staunch enemy of Islam against Daif, inshallah you will be one of the staunchest supporters of Islam, inshallah. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said that once a person accepts Islam, all his or her previous sins are washed away. All the negative is washed. The more bad they did, that much positive they get. That means the person before, he, before accepting Islam, the more evil he did, he was so far away from the deen. When he accepts Islam, that the negative he did all becomes positive means the more you abuse me or Islam inshallah you will get that many positive point after you accept Islam inshallah regarding a main question that how do I when there are many people who are hating me how do I yet do dawah and that's a very good question and when I was new in the field of Dawah many years back when I started preaching, you know, there were few people listening, then became hundred, then became thousand, then hundred thousand, then million. So I have to think, okay, first when I started out of hundred, one percent, you know, was my enemy. So hundred people, one person enemy, when thousand, there'll be ten enemies. When million, one person of million, it's ten thousand, ten thousand enemies. So yes, my popularity is increasing and percentage wise the enemy is increasing. That was my understanding, which I was wrong. When we do the analysis of the seerah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we come to know that when he started preaching Islam, five of them accepted Islam, there were no enemies. As he kept on growing, spreading the truth, the enemies increased. Today, the person who is the most influential in the world, it is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Not only agreed by the Muslims, even by non-Muslims. Michael H. Hart in his book, The Hundred Most Influential People, he puts our Nabi Kari Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as number one. He's a non-Muslim, but puts Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam number one, most influential human being in the world. Do you know the person against whom the maximum books are written? The person who's criticized most today in the world, who is it? Who is that person? Who is it? 
Who is the person today in the world who's criticized the most? Who's attacked the most? Who is it? Who is it? Sorry? Can't hear you. Donald Trump, they say. Donald? Donald Trump. Donald Trump. How many books are written against him? Today, the person who is the most attacked and hated in the world is Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. By the enemies of Islam. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Furqan, chapter number 25, verse number 31, that to every prophet we have appointed an enemy. And since Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is the last prophet, he has to have enemies. I told the presence of Arun Shuri in India proves that the Quran is right. If people like Arun Shuri who write books against Islam did not exist in the world, the Quran would have been proved wrong. Quran says for every prophet we have appointed an enemy. So then I realized the more you spread the truth and people start liking you, the enemies start hitting you. Alhamdulillah. When I did a little bit of survey in the, in the website, mashallah, the following kept on increasing. It is all because of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I am nothing. I don't deserve it. Not even 0.001% of it. We started, it increased, and as the MC said, now it is, alhamdulillah, 17.5 million on the Facebook. By Allah's grace, the largest any religious personality, whether Muslim, Christian, or Hindu. The second is a Christian, Joel Oyston, 16.9 million. But when you go on the net, and when I did a survey, out of every 10 websites, at least two websites are against me. Maybe 20%. It's, it may increase. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, the followers are 1.8 billion, maybe 2 billion, some non-Muslim loving. But yet, the people hitting him are more today. The books written against him. And that reminds me of a scholar. That you asked me the question, how when people hate you, why it continues. There's a scholar who's, who quoted that Hazrat Umar the second caliph of Islam Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created a sect who cursed Hazrat Umar so that he gets sawab one scholar said the reason Allah created a sect to curse Hazrat Umar so that more they curse in the akhirah he will get reward so in the way Allah is rewarding him when a person does the haq, the, the word of truth people speak against him it will be converted on the day of judgment in his favor because anyone who criticizes me speaks against me and it's in the wrong on the day of judgment his good deeds will come to me when his good deeds end my bad deeds will go to him so though I don't want anyone to curse me but when they curse me because of the teachings of Islam and our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam it makes me a stauncher die and the more you spread you'll have to get difficulties Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 155, Surely we will test you with fear and hunger, with loss of lives and goods, and what you have earned or toiled for. Allah will test you. Allah will test you with fear and hunger. And we find that more difficult the test, more is the higher reward in the Akhirah. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, all the Ambiyas, all the messengers were tested much more than any other non-messenger in the world. So more difficult the test, higher the reward. And today, I always thank Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala that whatever little bit I've done, it is Hadha Min Fazli Rabbi. It's only because of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And I left my profession. People told I'm a fool. I left my medicine profession and became a dai. I became from doctor of a body to doctor of a soul. They call me a fool because when I wanted to become a doctor, I thought it was the best profession in the world to, to serve the sick people. It is a good profession. But when I found a better profession of a dai, I gave up my medical profession to become a dai. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me much more than what I could have thought of. I'm sure if I was a doctor, you all wouldn't have come here in Pearl to hear me. They wouldn't have people. We did it for the sake of Allah. Allah gives you multiple times more. And today the problem, because we are spreading the truth,
kufrut. There are people against us. There are people accepting Islam in large numbers, alhamdulillah. Peace TV today, the network has more than 200 million viewers. Every day, hundreds of non-Muslims accepting Islam. This doesn't go down the throat of the enemies of Islam. Whether it be the Western countries, whether it be a country where I was born in India. They don't like it. I like the constitution of my country, India. It is one of the few countries in the world we give the citizen the right to preach, practice and propagate the religion. I did not break a single law of the country. But because I was spreading peace, I was giving solution for humanity. All the people who don't like peace to prevail, they don't like me. So more they strive against me, I'm striving harder to spread the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The more difficulties they put to me, thinking that they will, they will maybe make me break down, it is making me a more firm die. Because as Ibn Taymiyyah, you know the many people who attacked him, they threatened him that they will put him in jail, and they threatened him that they will kill him, they will exile him. Ibn Taymiyyah, Sheikh al Islam, and I say that I'm nothing, I'm nowhere compared to him. I'm just 0.0001%. And I say the same thing what he said. That what can you do to me? If you put me in jail, I will do zikr of Allah. If you exile me, I'll do tafakkur. Contemplate on the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If you execute me, I will become a shaheed. My jannah is in my heart. They cannot take my jannah away from me. I as a da'i of Islam looks at the seerah of the Prophet of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the more they attacked the Prophet, the Prophet was kind. The Prophet was compassionate. We are no way close to the Prophet. But we as Dai, we cannot retaliate. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Fusila, chapter number 41, verse number 34, that repel evil with goodness. You may never know who is your enemy, he will become your friend. And you are one of the best examples for the fulfillment of this verse of the Quran. Of Surah Fusila, chapter 41, verse number 34. That repel evil with goodness, the person who is your enemy will become your friend. And sister, I only follow the glorious Quran and the Sai Hadith to the best of my ability. And the more you follow, because our main goal and my lecture tomorrow, the purpose of our life, you should hear that. What is the purpose of our life? So if your purpose of our life is Akhirah, this dunya is nothing. You strive for the Akhirah, Allah will give you dunya and Akhirah. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he make me serve Islam as much as I can, though Allah doesn't require me the rubbish that we are. We pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may utilize every breath of my life to spread the deen to the best of my ability. Hope that answers the question, sister. Thank you, Dr. Zake, for everything and I hope you forgive me. Sister, I've already forgiven you and I pray for you and I pray that Allah has more people like you coming close to Islam, inshallah.